Hi and welcome to this video on the properties of simple covalent compounds. The first part we're going to have a look at is the melting points and boiling points of simple covalent compounds. So if we use water as an example, H2O, which is a simple covalent compound because it's only got a couple of atoms involved and they're all non-metals, you'll see from my drawing here that the actual molecules themselves are made up of covalent bonds, but something else as well, which are these intermolecular forces. Now, the key thing to remember when you heat up a simple covalent compound is you are not breaking the covalent bonds. It's the intermolecular forces that you're actually breaking. Covalent bonds themselves are actually very, very strong, so it takes a lot of energy to actually break the covalent bonds. However, intermolecular forces are weak. Now, what this means is that intermolecular forces don't take a lot of energy to actually break. And what you're actually doing when you heat up and break these intermolecular forces is instead of changing the compound and having a chemical reaction, you're just changing state. So for this example, we're taking water, H2O liquid, and we're turning it into steam, H2O gas. So in summary then, all simple covalent compounds have low melting points and boiling points. And the reason for this is that they have weak intermolecular forces, which don't take a lot of energy to break. OK, let's move on to whether they conduct electricity or not then. Now, the key thing when it comes to describing this property is to go back to the property of a covalent bond, which is a shared pair of electrons. Now, because in covalent compounds, all of those electrons are shared, it means they are not free to move. So in this case, we turn around and say it does not conduct electricity. And the reason for that is because the electrons are not free to move. On to the apply section then. So we've got two questions, both worth three marks. The first one says explain whether liquid nitrogen can conduct electricity when solid and when a liquid. So watch out for this one, it's a bit of a trick question. You might think when you see solid and liquid it might be ionic. However, liquid nitrogen is only made up of nitrogen, therefore it's got to be a covalent substance. So it's just talking about simple covalent compounds. Do they conduct electricity or not? And then explain why. Question two. Explain why nitrogen is a gas at room temperature. So this is a bit of application. So you need to think, right, nitrogen, it's a gas, so it's got to be simple covalent. Okay, so if it's simple covalent, why? Why is it a gas? Why does it have a low melting point? And so on. Pause the video now. Have a go at it. And we'll see how you've done them in. Okay, let's have a look then. So question one, explain whether liquid nitrogen can conduct electricity when solid and when liquid. So your first mark is for turning around and saying it will not conduct at all. The second mark is for turning around and saying there are no electrons free to move. And then the third mark is for saying it cannot carry a charge. Hopefully you got all three marks for that. Let's move on to question two. Explain why nitrogen is a gas at room temperature. So the first thing you've got to say is it's a simple covalent molecule. You've got to turn around and say what type of molecule it is. And then you talk about the properties. So it has weak intermolecular forces between the molecules and therefore little energy is needed to turn it into a gas. OK, hopefully that has helped sum up this section nice and easily. If you're feeling confident, have a go at the review question, which is compare and explain the properties of ionic and simple covalent substances. If you need a refresh on ionic properties, click on the link here. And that ends this video. Hi guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click the subscribe button down below and visit the website mrbarnstc.com for more.